Desmondi, and today I am thrilled to celebrate Read Across America with you by having our very own author, Anita Amin, who wrote Raja's Pet Camel. And today with us, we have another special person. His name is Seth Field. And you can see Seth in the picture. He's moving his hands because Seth speaks another language. Not only does he speak English, but he also speaks a language called American Sign Language. And so he is signing the words that I'm speaking for the children in the community, in the deaf community, who are unable to hear. So by looking at Seth, they are able to read his words with his hand signals to understand the story today. So we are really excited to be able to have Anita share her story in American Sign Language. So thank you, Seth. Thank you, Anita. I'm going to mute myself and allow us to begin. Boys and girls, I will also turn the chat off. And at the very end, what we will do is take a couple questions for the author. Here we go. I'm unmuted. Can everyone, uh, let's see. Hi everyone. It's so nice to meet everybody. I'm Anita Amin um, and I write children's books. Um, and I'm here to share my first picture book with you all. Um, and thank you so much, Seth, for reading this book with me to all these children. So the name of this book is Raja's Pet Camel, The Magic of Hope. And it's written by me, Anita Amin, illustrated by Parwinder Singh. Um, and he's the artist. He lives in India, which is where my family is from. And this is where the book is set. Also, it's set in India. As Raja walked home from school, a lone baby camel cried, me, you, me, you. Are you scared, Raja asked. He tried to pet it, but it kicked sand at him and skittered away until it noticed a shiny lunch tin. Are you hungry? Raja fed the camel leftover lentils and dates. It gulped down all of the dates. They played fetch, chase, and hide and seek and cuddled under a tree. When Raja got up to leave, the camel followed him home. I will name you Kummel. You can be my pet. Raja had always wanted to have a pet. Like the happy kids in his school books did. But most yard animals in India worked. They didn't just play. At home, his father, Bapu, frowned. We don't have time for camels. We're too busy herding goats. But when Raja kept pleading, please, and Kummel refused to go home, and no one came to claim her, Bapu said, it can stay until we find a home for it. But Kummel was a wild camel with wild ways. She ate Bapu's dates, chased their goats, knocked down fences, drank all their water, smashed clay pots, and spit at neighbors. After a week of missing snacks, losing goats, mending fences, 
hauling well water, patching pots, and apologizing to neighbors, Bapu cried, this camel is too much trouble. We're selling it at the fair. The fair was only weeks away. Raja was heartbroken until he remembered the camel race there. We could win big money, Raja told Kamal. Then Bapu will be so pleased, he'll never want to sell you. They trained every afternoon during Bapu's nap time. Raja pulled and pushed Kamal. Kamal wouldn't move. Raja scolded and coaxed Kamal. Kamal still wouldn't move. Raja took a break and ate dates. Kamal wanted some. I think we can win. Kamal was a fast runner when dates were the prize. Five days before the fair, Bapu Raja, Kamal, and a handful of goats set out across the desert. They walked for several days and nights. Along the way, people stopped to admire Kamal. And Raja worried, I don't want anyone to buy her. They can give it a good home, Bapu said. So can we, Raja thought, dragging his feet. And if you notice, a lot of people have to walk in the desert. A lot of people don't have cars. So that's why they're walking. Finally, they arrived at the fair. They weaved between tents and passed campfires spitting black smoke. Raja felt even smaller in the crowd of bubble drummers, sitar drummers, snake charmers, magicians, acrobats, and more. Bapu found a good spot and set up their tent. He dressed Kamal in her finest jewelry. Raja couldn't let anyone buy Kamal. She spits, Raja whispered to one buyer. She snores, he told another. Your village will never sleep. She's rude, he told a mustachioed man. Goats are nicer. Bapu sold all of his goats. He was happy. No one bought Kummel. Raja was happy until Bapu said, tomorrow is the busiest day of the fair. Someone will surely buy this camel then. Raja didn't sleep that night. Tomorrow was race day. After that, he might never see Kamal again. As soon as the sun rose, Raja hurried to the fruit stand for dates. I just sold the last bag, the fruit seller said. No dates for Kamal. And if you notice, a lot of the markets are outside in India also. They had no choice. They lined up at the racetrack. The other camels towered over Kamal. There's Kamal and there's Raja. But you're faster, Raja told her. The starter waved his flag. And then a stampede. Camel after camel roared past Raja and Kamal. Go, Kamal, we have to win, Raja shouted. The sun burned Raja's head. Sweat poured down his neck. He choked on the dust, but the soft pounding of camel feet grew louder and louder. Kummel was catching up. Then Raja saw the mustachioed man. 
in the crowd. Eating dates. No, Roger cried, but it was too late. The crowd screamed and scattered. Come, we'll chase the man and wolf down his dates. That is a bad camel. The mustachioed man stomped away. Roger wiped away his tears. We lost Kummel. Kummel gave a sad bellow and a burp. No one will buy this camel now, Bapu grumbled. It scared everyone, it has no manners. Roger felt a flash of hope. I can teach her manners. She's just a baby. She'll learn just like she learned to race. Maybe she'll even learn to guard the goats. Papu liked this idea. We'll give her one more try. Raja leaped with joy. He kissed Papu's feet and hugged Kamal. Then they packed up their tent and Kamal, now full of dates, obeyed Raja and Bapu most of the way home. And then in the back of the book, we have 10 facts about the Thar Desert in India. And this is where my family um, is from. Um, and, and so let's see the first fact. Many generations of a family, grandparents, parents, uncles, aunts, brothers, sisters, and cousins live together in the same house. Can you imagine that many people living in your house? Some people do. Some Most Indians don't own pets to just play with. Camels give milk to drink, pull carts, transport people, and give fur to weave into rope, among other jobs. Do your pets do jobs around the house? They do jobs around the house? I see some people nodding. Wow. Well, we'll have to get you to train our pet that's coming. <laughs> Traditionally, Indians eat with their right hand, not with the fork or spoon. This includes eating soup, which can be mixed with rice to make it easier to scoop up. Indians celebrate when it finally rains. People dance and play in the rain, a fun way to cool down. I remember whenever we would go visit my grandmother and it would rain, the whole town would come out to play in the rain. Everyone would start dancing in the rain. When it's too hot inside, Indians sleep on cots or mats on the rooftop. So we would always sleep on the rooftop. We would visit for summer vacations. And you can hear the camels and the peacocks and the cows in the alleyway. And all the flat flocks of bats would fly over you at night. I thought they were birds the first time. Many homes don't have running water or stable electricity. No air conditioning or refrigerators. On special occasions, slabs of ice can be carted from a factory and cracked at home for a cold drink. And so my grandmother, whenever we would come visit, she would order a huge slab of ice as big as a bed. And it would be carted on, like on an ox cart um, to our, our home and then they would crack it there at home, um, you know, uh, to little pieces and they would make um, something, uh, something like lemonade. To take an Indian style bath, pour a few cups of cool water from a bucket over yourself. So no long hot showers there, there isn't enough water. A lot of times people have to walk, you can't always get uh, water from uh, the faucet at home. So a lot of times people have to walk to a well for miles and they bring back just a pail of water. Uh, it sometimes takes hours just to get that one pail of water. Most people don't own cars. You might walk or ride a scooter, bicycle, three-wheel taxi, camel, bullet cart, or an open air carriage pulled by a runner while sharing the road with cows, donkeys, goats, monkeys, and peacocks. 
So tabla is an Indian drum bumped by the drummer's hands. The sitar is about four feet tall with strings that are plucked to make music. Indians leave their doors open during the day to cool their homes and welcome visit visitors. But cows are plentiful and roam free and sometimes wander in. And we would always have, every time we went to visit, the cows would always stick their heads in um, my grandparents' house and see what we were doing um, and see if we had any food to feed them. But it was always fun to visit. And I, want, I have a question for everybody. Um, because I'm always surprised, because uh, I always eat dates, so I just assumed everyone knows what a date is. Raise your hand if you've ever tried a date or have seen a date. So a few people, more than normal, actually. So, so this is, in case you haven't seen what one looks like, I brought a date with me. It looks like this, and it's kind of squishy, a little sticky. But it's yummy, it's sweet. It tastes a little bit like chocolate dipped in honey. And I like to have it with tea. It's, it's like a, it's a fruit, so it's a nice um, dessert, it's healthy. That was fantastic, Anita. Thank you so much both to you and to Seth. Now, boys and girls, if you would like to ask a question, we have opened up the chat. The questions go directly to myself. Um, so I will go ahead and see what kind of questions we have before we wrap up our program today. Um, I do have children who, someone who shared that their family eats with their right hand as well. Uh -huh. And um, many children wanting to say hello. And Hi. <laughs> <laughs> have you written any other books, Anita? Yes, I've written, um, I have about 20 um, books that are, uh, have been published or coming out. Um, most of them are nonfiction. So um, do, does everyone know what nonfiction and, and the difference between nonfiction and fiction? So, so just in case, um, nonfiction is our real facts. Everything is real um, that happened. And fiction is made up, it might be in, inspired by something real, but it's, it's a made up story. So I write a lot of nonfiction also for grades, uh, for kindergarten to sixth grade, different books. And I'm actually holding Question. up one of Anita's books. Do you want to read the title for us? Yeah. What Would It Take to Make a Hoverboard? Is uh, one of the first nonfiction books that I wrote. Very actually. cool. And there's yeah. diagrams in here. This is a really neat book. Thank you, Anita. Yeah. Um, another question, what inspires you, Miss Anita? What inspires me? Well, I, you know, I have children um, who are in third grade. I have twins in third grade. So they inspire me a lot. I get a lot of um, ideas just from things that we do um, together. And then also my memories, um, you know, my childhood memories and my trips to India and my family. Um, and also um, my work experience. I used to be an, an engineer, which is like um, STEM. Uh, is everyone familiar with STEM, technology STEM? Oh, we have STEM, STEM classes maybe. Um, so I, that's the kind of work I used to do. So all of that sort of inspires me or just, you know, anything that I happen to see, you know, while, while I walk, I go for walks every day. Um, and so on those walks, I get, I always get a lot of ideas just by, just by you know looking around or just by daydreaming. So yeah, good question. Um, so this is a question that's come up more than once. Have you ever ridden a camel? I have been on a camel. I'm, I can't say I rode one because I was actually three um, and it was my first trip to India to visit um, relatives and my grandparents. I, I was born and raised in the United States, but um, my parents moved from India, so my grandparents were still there. Um, and I was always fascinated by the camels, you know, and everything was very new, and I, I loved the camels in the desert, um, which is where my family is from. Um, so I, I kept asking my dad, could I please ride a camel? So they put me on a camel, and then the camel stood up, 
And that's when I learned that I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> so then I wanted my dad to take me down and we didn't get very far. But maybe now it'll be a little different, you know, because when you're three and it's a little bit high up, um, yeah. but as an adult, it's, it's probably not as high. Um, we have several children who, just so many wonderful questions, boys and girls. Um, and I think that my first grade son's class is tuning in. I didn't know they'd be tuning in. This is fun. But the last two questions for today, um, I love this one. Why do humans sleep on a rooftop? Because they might fall down. That's a great question. I've never been asked that question. Um, and it's actually um, something I'm, I'm thinking about for a story too, another story. But, um, you know, it gets really hot. Um, in India and actually a lot of places in India, especially the desert, the rooftop is not slanted like it is uh, a lot of places here in the United States, you know, like this, it's flat like that. So you won't fall off, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, as long as you don't get, you know, you don't go near the, the ledge, but, um, but it's flat. And then a lot of people at night, they actually use the rooftop for a lot of different things. Um, you know, they have parties on the rooftop, they do their laundry on the rooftop, you know, and they, they have, um, they put cots at night, they put cots and mats, and that's where you sleep. And then you can see all your neighbors sleeping. <laughs> you can hear them snoring. <laughs> door. <laughs> that's fantastic. And I bet you can see the stars at night, which is probably. Yes, beautiful. it's beautiful. Yes. And you can hear um, all the, the noises. Yeah. I, I have a one last question. And Seth, I just want you to know, I'm so thankful for you to answer questions because this is nothing that you could prepare for. So thank you, Seth. The last question, Anita, could you talk about the special um, um, jewel that you have on your forehead? Several children are- Oh, sure. Ready. So this is actually a, a sticker. Um, see, that comes off. I'm gonna take it off because then if I put it back on, it'll be, <laughs> you know, it won't be written though. But, um, but it's called a bindi. Um, and actually, I guess I could take it off. I won't need it afterwards. I could take it off. So it's just a sticker. It comes off, see, like that, and sticking to my. Um, so, and it used to mean when a, a, a woman wore it in India, it used to mean that they were married, that they're married. Um, sort of like we have wedding rings um, here in the United States. So a, a bindi and a red streak. Um, meant that you were married, but now a lot of people just wear it, you know, just like jewelry. Fantastic. And I love bindis, I have to say. <laughs> Fantastic. So boys and girls, one of the great things about Raja's Pet Camel is that we get to learn about different um, cultures and different ways of living. For example, you may not have ever heard of people sleeping on a roof, or you may not have heard of a bimbi before. And so that's why for Read Across America Week, we encourage you to pick up books that have characters that might look different than you so that you can learn about different cultures. Boys and girls, thank you so much. Grab a book, read today, read tomorrow. If you read 20 minutes a day, you will have read 1 million 800,000 words in one year. That's almost 2 million wow. words. Yes. So read today, boys and girls. Happy March's Reading Month. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me for Read Across America. And thank you so much, Seth, for reading this, this book with, um, with me to the audience. Such a Hi. great audience. Thank you. Thank you. Inviting me. Thank you so much. Thank you, Seth. I appreciate it. March is my favorite month. Bye.